hello guys so guys today we'll be talking about the dating mistakes which guys make in, re in relationships dating mistakes guys make it could be nigerian guys it could be any guy because this is applicable to all guys whether you're nigerian Gan Ghanaian, liberian south african anyone you are guys all over the world make these same mistakes when they are dating women now what are those mistakes one of the major mistakes men make when dating a woman or why trying to date a woman is number one begging a woman to be in a relationship with you like this is like the worst way to start a, a, a relationship once you beg a woman to get into a relationship with you and she gets into a relationship with you out of pity my brother just know that you are going to suffer in that relationship because even in life in in, in, in general in life in, in general you should not enter into situations where you don't have leverage this is like a an advice which applies in all areas of life Never you get into situations where you don't have leverage. And now, when you beg somebody to do something for you, you are giving that person leverage. Because if that person says no, it's you that is going to lose. Because that person literally has no other reason to help you except out of pity. And when somebody is helping you out of pity, they are bound to look down on you. Unlike when you are getting to a relationship from a point of strength, whereby the girl has seen that, okay, if I date this guy now, I'm going to get a lot of things from him. He's going to make my life better. That is you making a girl to want to date you from a position of strength, not a position of weakness, where you are begging her, please come on and please date me. Some guys, I know some guys who literally had to cry for, their, for, a, for a girl to pity them and date them. Now, the worst thing you can do for yourself is to make a girl to date you out of pity. That is like the worst thing any guy can do. That is like the worst way. That is the worst way to start a relationship by begging a girl to get into a relationship with you. Because obviously, she's never going to respect you in that, in that relationship. She's never going to respect you. Because don't forget, you beg her into it. She does not want to date you, but because of the way you are crying, out of pity, she decided to, okay, let me help this guy so that he will not die. So, no matter what, never you beg any girl to date you. Because once you beg a girl to date you, you've already signed it that you want this relationship to be frustrating. For me, because she's going to frustrate you. Don't forget, she doesn't like you. She probably, she probably is not attracted to you in any way. So you are going to suffer in that relationship because you'll be putting in the effort and she'll not be putting back any effort because for you to be happy in a relationship, it has to be balanced. Now, it's a situation whereby the relationship is not balanced. That means you are going to suffer because as you're putting the effort, she's not putting any, anything. So it's going to be unbalanced. And whoever is putting the more effort, which is you, you suffer. Because trust me, any relationship nearby, one person is the one putting the effort. That person is bound to suffer. And you should not even be in that kind of, of relationship where you are the only one putting in the effort. It's going to drain you. It's going to exhaust you. So why go into such, such relationships where you know that this girl did not want to date you, yet you are trying to date her? Never you beg any girl to date you. Don't beg your way into relationships because the girl will not prioritize you. She will not care about you. She will not value you. After all, you beg her to be in that relationship and she will cheat on you. Yes, she's going to cheat on you. She's going to date you or, or you think that she's dating you while she's out there doing or sleeping around with guys whom she actually likes. When a girl dates you out of respect, out of genuine likeness, out of attraction, 
he's always much better than when a girl dates you out of pity. Are you hearing me, guys? It's better when a girl dates you out of respect, out of attraction, out of likeness, genuine likeness for you, than when she dates you out of pity. She'll never respect you. She'll never value that relationship. And trust me, you suffer. Now, the next thing is spending too much on a girl at a talking stage. Spending too much on a girl at the beginning stages of that relationship or at the talking stages. Now, you want a girl to date you. And now, in your mind, you feel that the easiest way to make this girl to get or agree to date you or agree to get into a relationship with you is by you spending on her. Spending profusely on her. Do you know what will happen if you think that this is the best way to make a girl to start dating you? The, the thing that will happen is that she will get addicted to your hands. Don't forget, the kind of how you raise a child or the things you gave a child is also the things she, that that child is going to expect when he or she grows up. If you raise a child by always telling, giving her or him everything he wants, but by the time that boy or, or girl grows up, she is going to expect that the parents also give him or her everything she requests for. And now, at that stage of that child's life, when she must have grown, it becomes more difficult to correct her or to correct that character of always expecting her parents to grant all her wishes or all his wishes. Now, what I'm saying in essence is how you began to date a woman is how she will expect you to continue. So, if in the beginning stages, you think that, okay, if for this girl to agree to date me, I'll have to keep spending on her. And then, along the line, probably when you've gotten her, or when she, she has agreed to, to date you, along the line, you decide to stop. That girl would think that you stopped loving her, because that, because that is what you showed her. That is how you got her. So she will expect you to continue to do it. And once you stop doing it, it becomes a problem. How you raise a child is how that child is going to turn out to be. How you start anything with a girl, as long as it has to do with relationship and marriage, is how she will expect you to continue. And if along the line you stop, it becomes a problem. So if you are one of these guys who are always spending on women at the beginning stages, there's nothing wrong spending with on your woman there's nothing wrong spending on your woman but make sure it is after she has started working for it after she has started deserving it you can't just meet a girl simply because you want her to date you simply because you want her to agree to date you or simply because you want her to like you you start throwing your money on her she will not she will not value you because even you as a man money that was given to you freely and money that was given to you when you worked for it which one do you value more it's not the one you worked for it's what you worked for. And so it is for women. Money they worked for is, to them, it is more valuable than the one that you just gave to them simply because you want them to like to like you. So make sure that that girl has started putting in efforts. She has started doing nice things for you. Now, in the beginning stages, the only amount of money you should spend is money on dates only. I know, I know some guys who, when they want to start dating a girl, or when they are still seeing a girl, or when they are seeing the talking stages, they are already sending for this girl 50k, 50,000 naira. That if you convert it to, to dollars, that's almost like 100 dollars. When this girl has not done anything for you, because you simply want her to start dating you, or, or you want her to like you, you've already started, started sending for her that amount of money. She's, got, she's just going to see you as an ATM. And once a girl sees you as an ATM, she never see you more than that. You always be an ATM to her. And of course, she will see you as a simp. And you all know what girls do to simps. They destroy simps and they take advantage of simps. And they manipulate simps to get money out of them. And, and after getting money from you, they, use it, they will go and spend it on the, a, a guy they actually like. Who is not giving them one go. So mind yourselves, guys. Respect yourselves. Avoid this kind of mistake. Avoid this kind of dating mistake. I keep seeing this mistake. Guys spending on women when these women have not worked or deserved their money. And, and, and later, when you stop along the line and the girl starts, you know, nagging, and you, you start asking yourself, what's wrong? What's wrong? What happened? It's because you stopped. 
So however you want to date a girl in the long run, also start that same way. Don't start with being two nines and along the line, you stop being nine. It, it will cause problems. So how you want to date a girl should also be how you start that relationship or how you try to toast her. Important. Now the next thing is, then the next mistake a lot of guys make in relationship is allowing the girl to control them and run the relationship. There are some guys who are weak, weaklings, cowards, men who don't even understand their words. See, in every relationship, in every relationship, and a marriage is true, the man is the prize. The man is the prize. Now, why do I say that the man is the prize? Because it's obviously the man who brings more value to the table. Facts. Go to every single relationship today in Nigeria. Weigh what the man brings to the table and weigh what the woman brings to the table. 90% of the time, you see that the man is contributing over 80% of the value that is brought to that relationship. Financially, emotionally, mentally, and otherwise, is the men who are bringing more value. So, if you are bringing more value, there is no way you should allow your girl to run that relationship. See, in, in male and female dynamics, in male and female relationship dynamics, whoever brings more value has the authority in that relationship or marriage. That's why if you go to every household, if you go to every marriage, if you go to every family, the father is the one who brings more value to that marriage. The father is the one who carries more, more responsibilities, financially, emotionally, mentally, and otherwise. And, that, and, that, and therefore, that gives him an authority over his family, over his household, over his marriage. Why? Because he is the one carrying more of the responsibilities. So responsibilities gives you authority. You can't be spending on your woman. You can't be there for your woman. You can't always be there emotionally for your woman. You can't always be there mentally for her. You can't always be the one, you know, pushing her, encouraging her, spending on her, pampering her, doing everything for her. And yet, you are too weak to call her to order when she misbehaves. Yet, you are too weak to be in charge of your relationship. There are some guys who don't have mouths in their relationship, but they don't want to spend it. They are the ones literally doing everything, yet their woman controls them. This is the height of simping amongst men. How will you be the one doing everything and yet your woman is the one controlling you? Makes no sense. And guys like this should repent. The next thing is being emotionally reactive to everything. If you are a guy, one of the things which makes you a guy is being non-reactive especially if you're dating women or if you have sisters. I grew up with sisters. I grew up with many sisters. So that's why it's very, very difficult for me to react emotionally to what women do. Basically, if you want to have a lasting relationship with a girl or with women, better relationship with them, you must learn to be a stoic. You must learn to be non-emotionally reactive because women... No, uh, women are masters are trying to test the patience of a man. Women are, are masters are trying to test the nerves of a man. And what they are actually trying to see is to see if you react emotionally. It's called shape test. They want to know how much of an emotionally mature person you are. So if your girlfriend is always doing things that makes you angry, don't shout, don't complain, don't th throw tantrums, don't nag. That is the job of a woman. What you should do is to call her to order. Set boundaries. Tell her, babe, if you do this thing, I can see what I'll do. Don't be the one that is always shouting. In fact, it makes no sense. Don't make this mistake. And with time, that girl will get tired of you because shouting, complaining, complaining, nagging, all these emotional reactions are the job of women, not the job of the men. So once a woman knows or sees these things in you, she will stop being, she will lose attraction for you. Because a man is not meant to be reactive. A man is meant to be calm, emotionally mature, emotionally in control of himself, and emotionally stable. Men must learn to control their emotions. Men must learn to be non-reactive to the emotional tantrums, to the shit-testing,
to the naggings of women. If your girlfriend is nagging, is shouting, is throwing tantrums, don't follow her and react. Be calm. Is why you is, is why you're a man. Be calm, my friend. Is why you're a man. A man is meant to be the emotional pillar of his woman. A man is meant to be the emotional guider, if there's a, if, if there's any word like that, guider of her of his relationship. Imagine if your woman is crying and you follow her and cry, or she's throwing tantrums, she's complaining, she's uh, she's just emotionally destabilized, and you now f follow her in that madness. She 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 will be unattracted to you. She will lose attraction for you. Why? Because women are emotional, highly emotional, and they are therefore designed to be with their opposites, which are men who are in control, in charge of their own emotions. Basically, women love stoics, or rather, men who are emotionally calm and men who are emotionally stable. This is why most girls prefer calm guys over guys who talk a lot, or guys who react and anyhow they are angry they react they are sad they react they are unhappy they react they are feeling down they react girls don't like guys like that don't be that kind of guy girls like guys who are emotionally stable who know how to control their own emotions because the only way that a man could be in a state to control or provide stability to the emotions of his woman or a woman is if he himself has his own emotions under control. And women are always in search of men who can help them manage their own emotions because women have erratic and fickle and destabilized emotions. So they are always looking for men who will help them manage their own emotions. So, so now imagine when a girl is, is not seeing you, that you cannot manage your own emotions. She's not going to be attracted to you. Because women always want guys who are better than them in all ramifications. And emotions is one of those ramifications. So the next thing is not keeping options. See, if you're dating a girl, I'm not saying marriage. Marriage is a whole different ballgame. If you're dating a girl and you want to have leverage in that relationship, because leverage basically means that in your mind, you know that even if this girl leaves me, it will not affect me. That is the leverage I'm talking about. And having this leverage, or let's say confidence, because when you have many girls, you are basically confident because you know that if the girl leaves you, nothing will happen to you. It will not affect you. Unlike when that girl is your heaven and egg, she's everything to you. She's your alpha and omega. If she leaves you, you could die. Now, having options, which means having other, other girls on the, on the side, I'm not saying you should have sex with these girls. I'm not saying you should spend on them. I'm not saying you should do anything with them. Just keep them on the side. Just be friendly with them. Keep them on the side. Because even that girl you're dating, she has her own option. Maybe she's not like, she's not active with those options or she did not go in search of those options by herself because men naturally come to women. Go to your girl, girlfriend's DM. That guy, that guy you're dating, go to her DM. There are many guys there. Those are her options. Maybe she, she was not the one, or, and most likely she was not the one who met or went to meet them or went to chat with them or went to DM them. Those, are the, those guys came to her. But you, as a guy, because women will not approach you unless you are basically rich. You drive supercars, sports cars or nice cars, and women basically throw themselves at you. But if you're, if you're a normal guy and you want to get options, the easiest way is to approach them. But don't do anything with them. Just approach them, keep their, keep their phone number in your phone, chat with them once in a while. All those things, just be friendly with them, just in case of tomorrow. Having that option alone gives you confidence to be able to be in charge of your, of your relationship and not be afraid of losing a girl. Because the moment you become afraid of losing a girl, that is the moment you become weak in that relationship. And that is the moment you start allowing your girl to misbehave. And once you start allow, allowing a woman to misbehave, she stops respecting you. Because women actually prefer guys who will call them to order. See, I'll tell you guys now a secret about women. 
women want fathers in their boyfriends and in their husbands. And now, do you think a father will allow his his daughter to misbehave? No. Women grew up with this, you know, innate desire to have a man who will do those things their father used to do. And therefore, a woman knows that if she misbehaves, her father will call her to order. And when a woman starts misbehaving in a relationship or marriage, what's in, in, inside, inside her, what she's actually expecting is that since I'm misbehaving now, my man should come into order. And this will make me to respect him more. Just like I used to respect my own father back then when he used to come into order. But if you are too weak or too afraid of losing your girl, are you, you know, due to how weak you are and how optionless you are, and you decide to play safe and not call her to order, and allow her to misbehave, that girl is going to that girl is going to lose respect for you. And once a woman loses respect for you, it's over. It's over. It's over. Because women's respect for a man is directly proportional to their level of attraction for that man. So if a girl loses her respect for you, she loses attraction for you. And it's basically over. Now the next thing is being the only one investing in a relationship. Don't make this mistake. This is like one of the worst mistakes any guy can do. Being in a one-sided relationship. That's like the worst mistake any guy can be in. If you are investing in a, in a girl, now I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about money alone. If, if a girl comes to visit you, you are investing your time. If you go to visit a girl, you are investing your time. If you and a girl are having problems and you are quarreling all those things, you are investing your emotions. You are also investing your money. You are basically doing for her nice stuff, buying for her these, taking her places, all those things. Being nice to her, advising her. Those are investments. Now, if you are the only person doing these things, then that relationship is toxic. It's very unhealthy for you. There's something I always tell both men and women to always do. If you have a boyfriend, if you have a girlfriend, you should always do this thing. If you are in a relationship, you should always do this thing. Every now and then, as a boyfriend or a girlfriend, ask yourself, is this guy investing the same thing or is this guy putting the same effort as me? Or am I losing? Because in a relationship, for a, a relationship to, to be successful, or for a marriage to be successful, the investment from both partners has to be balanced has to be balanced. Or else, if one partner is, is the only one doing it, he or she becomes tired. And before you know it, that relationship or, or marriage is over. Because you are basically working yourself to death and, and the other person is doing nothing. And once a relationship or marriage becomes unbalanced, it is bound to end. Problems will develop and it is bound to come to an end. So there has to be equality in what's this one is investing and what this one is investing. Probably not money. For example, now, I don't believe, personally, I don't believe that my girlfriend should be spending on me. Yes, every now and then she should buy me stuff, but I would never, like, say it's, a mandate, it's mandatory for a girl to spend her money on me. But you see, cooking for me, mandatory. Now, not cooking, like, every time, but cooking for me every now and then, mandatory. Being there for me emotionally, I'm not saying I'll go and cry to her. No, just providing that peaceful environment for me to be happy. You know, a man's life is full of stress. So your, your woman should always be there to push you, to encourage you, to be your cheerleader. Men appreciate those things, not just me. Men, like this, are, this is like one of the basic things men want from women. A woman who will push you, encourage you, you know, be your cheerleader, be your greatest cheerleader. See, I'll tell you something now. I'll, I'll tell you guys something. When you hear that phrase, behind every successful man is a woman, they're not saying that that woman actually helped that man to become successful. No. What they're actually saying is that that woman was the cheerleader of that man. She was the one encouraging him, boosting his, uh, his, boosting his, being there to motivate him. Probably not to motivate him, but just being there to cheer him up because the journey of success is full of up, ups and downs. Now, when you are down, you don't go out to the bar to direct yourself to stupor. No, you go back to your wife. That is why you have a wife. She will use her feminine energy to resuscitate you, to make you vibrant again, to raise the beast in you, 
to go and conquer the world again. This is the job of a woman to tend to your to your down to tend to your down pits. I'll use that word if it makes sense. Down pits, like when you're down. Your woman is there to you know make you feel like the man you are. Boost see, wet, wet, W O D S carry carry a lot of weights, carry a lot of power. And now the job of a woman is to always use wet to push you, to activate the fire in you, to make the fire in you to start burning again. That is the job of a woman. Now, unfortunately, a lot of men are unfortunate. Instead of them to come back to a wife who will encourage them, who will push them, who will, you know, lighten the fire in them, make it much more heavy, the fire, make it more, much more wide. They come back to a warrior at home who is going to fight them and make their life more miserable. This is one of the reasons why a man should never marry a woman who doesn't give him peace. What men basically look for in marriage is a woman that will give them peace. Because if a woman can give you peace, that means she will encourage you, she will be your support, she will be there to, you know, make you be like a man. See, I could be having a bad day. From personal experience, I could be having the worst day on earth. And I come back home. And my girlfriend tells me, babe, I know it's hard, but I believe in you. You can do this. I'll look at her and I'll feel that energy running in me to go out and conquer the world. That is the job of a woman, to always activate the fire in her husband or in her boyfriend whenever it comes out. That is the basic job of a woman, to be there for the man, to give him peace, to give him that atmosphere that will encourage the man to go out into the world and conquer. Because every man goes out into the world to fight. Every man goes out into the world to conquer. And now if you come back home, we don't expect to start another battle, another war in our house. No, we want to come back to peace. We want to come back to serenity. We want to come back to, you know, a loving wife who will boost our morale, boost the fire in us, and make us go out the next day to even fight fiercely, more fiercely and viciously. That is what we want in our woman, not a woman who will give us war. We can't be fighting at two war fronts. You can't be fighting outside and still come back to your house and be fighting. Makes no sense. Now, the next thing is so, so the point I've made is that she has to be investing and you have to be investing. It has to be equal. Don't be the only one doing the whole thing in the relationship. If you are bringing 10, she has to bring 10. If you are bringing one, see, the secret to a successful relationship. And marriage is one communication, two commitments, and three. Hundred, I bring hundred percent, and you bring hundred percent. It's as simple as that. No room for slacking. No room for complacency. If I'm bringing hundred percent, you are bringing hundred percent. We are giving it our, our best, which is commitments. So that's basically it, guys. My next thing is, correlating male friends. If your girlfriend has a male best. I'm telling you now that you are, you are, you are, you're a foolish boyfriend. Simple as that. You're a foolish boyfriend. Once a woman starts keeping a male best friend or keeping many male friends, it's a huge red flag which you as the guy should call to order immediately. Why are you keeping many male friends? In fact, in the first instance, as a guy, the best girls to date, I, I know like, a girl could have no friend and still be promiscuous. But if you want to reduce your chances of having too many problems in your relationship, always go for girls who don't have much friends at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you this thing from experience. I'm not saying you should go and date a loner or somebody who doesn't have anybody. Just date girls who have small circles. Because the smaller the circle a girl has, the more peaceful your relationship will be. Unlike when your girl knows everybody, everybody knows that it becomes a problem. I'm, I'm telling you guys now this from experience. It becomes a problem. That's why the best kind of girls to date are shy girls, feminine girls, and girls who are not too outgoing. If you have a girl who doesn't go out too much, you are lucky. Because if you date a girl who knows everybody, you are going to suffer. Because that she knows everybody it also means that she has you know been through many guys. I'm not saying that every, I'm not saying that every girl who who knows a lot of people 
a lot of men have been through a lot of men. I'm saying that the probability of her being with a lot of men is higher when that girl knows many men. So to cut down the probability of you suffering or having problems later in your relationship, it's better you date girls who don't know much people, who have a small circle. You, you, your relationship will be peaceful. And another good reason for this is that that girl will grow more dependent on you because she obviously doesn't have much male friends. So you so you automatically fill the gap of her best friend and her boyfriend, which makes a more lasting relationship. Unlike when you're dating a girl who knows the whole world, who knows the home, who know men everywhere. Now, if your girl has many male friends, it's a red flag. Don't don't even date that kind of girl. If your girl, if your girlfriend or the girl you want to date has many female friends and goes out, she's always partying with them. Is a red flag to look out for. Don't date this kind of girl. Or what you do? Hmm? What you do because a girl is the, is a replica of her friends. Simple as that. In fact, it's not even about a girl. Everybody is a replica of the people they, they hang out with. If I hang out with five guys frequently, look at those five guys. Whatever their life is all about is how my own life will be. Will be. If they're lazy, I'll be lazy because I can't be a hard worker and be, and be comfortable hanging out with people who are lazy. So if they're lazy, I'm lazy. If they are foolish, I'm foolish. If they are unwise, I'm, I'm unwise. If they are promiscuous, I'm most likely promiscuous. If they do hook up, I do hook up. So what you do as a guy is, in fact, this is like a, a life advice, a life hack to women to understand, to knowing the kind of women you are, you are dating or before you date them or before you marry them, anyone. Before you date a girl, check her female friend. Because obviously, she would, when you are about to date a girl newly, she will try to hide her real self. She will try to you know, make herself appear much better than she actually is. So what you do, the easier, easier, easier way to know what a girl is, is really all about or what her character is all about is to vet her female friends. Once you vet her female friends, if you find out that some of them are, are into hookups, it, into hookup, into uh, hookup, if you find out that some of them do drugs, if you find out some of them are, are basically promiscuous, then the chances of her being that those that same exact thing is almost 100%. So you cut your losses before you even invest anything. So always check these things out. Very nice advices I'm, I'll give you here. That nursing is always been the one to beg after a quarrel. Always been the first one to apologize after a quarrel. You and a girl uh, quarreled, she was at fault, and you're the first one to run to her to apologize. This is a, this is something you should not be doing. She will lose respect for you. Once a girl does something that makes two of you to quarrel and she's at fault, cease communication. Cease communication until she apologizes. Because if you're not the one apologizing, she will grow to look down on you. Because obviously, she will be in her mind, she'll be like, if I do anything, after all, she, she really wants to come to me to, to apologize, even when I'm wrong. She developed that sense of ego, that sense of entitlement. And before you know it, she loses respect for you. So be strong, be strict on your girls. See, some of you don't know how to ha some of you don't know how to handle women. You have to be strict on a girl you're dating, else she misbehave. I'm not saying beat your woman, I'm not saying be harsh, I'm not saying be terrible or be, a, be basically toxic. No. Just be strict. I have boundaries. Now, next thing is being too nice without drama. I'm not making her cry. If you are too nice, if you never make a girl to cry, if you never give her emotional ups and down, she's, she's going to lose attraction for you. See, women love drama. And therefore, the easiest way to create drama in a, in a relationship is to always incite her emotions. Sometimes make her angry unnecessarily. Sometimes, just tell her things that will make her angry. Just create a room for drama. But not like every time. Don't be that toxic. That is why, this is actually the reason why girls prefer to date toxic guys who are nice than guys who are just nice. 100% nice. No. They will lose attraction for you after a while. Probably in the beginning stages, they will like you, how nice you are, how sweet you are. But that's after a while. As long as the toxicity is not there, she's gone. So always create drama. 
always creates those emotional ups and downs for her. Emotional roller coaster for her. She will like you more because you are balancing the whole equation. You are toxic and you are nice. You are toxic and nice. They, will not just, they just love that game of toxicity and being nice. You quarrel, you apologize to her, you buy her things, you put her makeup sets, all those things. Women love all those things, basically. Now, the next thing is not setting boundaries and, and punishments. So, you, you are the, you are the, this nigga, girl, and you don't have boundaries. You don't have set out or laid out punishments if she misbehaves. Of course, she misbehaves. You tell her, girl, if you do this thing, this is what I'll do. If you disrespect me, if you ever disrespect me again, I'll walk away from this relationship. And if she ever does, because obviously, once you tell a girl this kind of thing, she would like to do it just to see what you do. Just to see if you are really if you are really serious. Now when she does it, sees communication, sees attention from her. Basically, withdraw all your attention from her. So she will learn her lesson because the easiest way to punish women is by withdrawing attention from them. Because women live off attention. Women live off the attention of the man they are in love with, or the man they love, or the man they are attracted to, or, or the man they like. They basically live off that attention. So when she misbehaves, you, you withdraw it. So they will know that you are serious. Always call your girl to order. Just make your girl to see you as a father. Because the easiest way to make a woman to always be in her best behavior is by treating her like her, her, exactly how her father would treat her, which is by being strict and disciplined. So that's basically it, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Comment, see guys, comments. Ask your questions. I'm here to help you guys. So guys, see you guys in the next video. Peace.